Welcome to documentation number 10 and um, the second in the row of birth of a pianist. The reason why I keep to this title uh, is that uh, these videos are not in any way tutorials of about how to play the piano. This has only something to do with a demonstration of the self-healing ability of the human consciousness. And uh, before I explain this a little bit more, I want to say welcome to a lot of friends here. So this time again, I have an audience of uh, trusty friends, or what's called in English, which um, is wonderful to have. So uh, there is somebody here who really wants to listen to what I have to say. Uh, this about the self-healing ability of the human consciousness has um, a lot of different nuances uh, built in. Uh, very shortly, uh, very briefly, uh, or to sum it up, I can say that um, it's unusual uh, in my generation <coughs> and in my upbringing to blame uh, anybody for problems you have. There's a tendency that uh, it's always your own fault and if you blame something, then you play the blame game or look what you made me do and things like that. But uh, if you really want to find out how the human consciousness works, you also have to be open for very destructive people's uh, possible existence. And uh, I've written about this in the Ring Bearer's diary, so I won't explain it in detail, but um, from uh, 1966 and uh, a lot of years onwards, um, I've been in something which can only be explained as an emotional concentration camp. And um, by and by, I found out, find out that this is not my fault. There have, have been ruthless people who have treated me uh, with some kind of um, mental torture, which is, uh, as I said, difficult to, to describe. But the result is that I disappeared from the musical scene in 1966. Uh, around 1968, my pianistic abilities slowly came back so that I was convinced and talked with a friend about it that I would be able to win the Tchaikovsky competition in Moscow in 1970. But then these um, people, which I uh, have described uh, elsewhere, continued these uh, attacked, attacks and I couldn't withstand that. So I thought that I was the problem and if you really believe that you yourself is a problem and not worthy of existence, it's not possible to express yourself really. So um, what's happening now is that uh, I have been able to reveal what has been going on and as a parallel to that uh, I am like a person from the shipwreck who has been swimming uh, for years and now finally is uh, climbing to the shore <coughs> and uh, <coughs> trying to rest a bit in the, bit in the sand. And uh, um, there's something I have to say also. Uh, in order to get the perspective right. And this is something I have been brought up uh, not to say, because uh, this is not modest. Um, I'm not a person who uh, in his backyard or his, in his uh, garage tries to uh, be a pianist. I am already a pianist. And what more is, and this is what I'm not allowed to say uh, for some strange reason, I am a super virtuoso. And this will be clear uh, in a few months, I'm quite sure. And uh, since the last time I made this documentation, you can see, if you listen, that there's really something dawning here. And to uh, make a super virtuoso disappear from the ability to play, play the piano, that demands quite a lot of uh, impact. And uh, it's been uh, quite a task to solve this. And uh, what's happening is 
that my pianistic appendices return in a tempo that and in a way that I'm not able to decide. Mm -hmm. So um, each time I have made one of these uh, videos and I want to make a new one, I think, well, the next time I will be able to play uh, with such uh, precision that everybody must be able to see that I will be or I am on the way to be uh, being a great pianist. But this is not the way it goes. What's happening to me is like something uh, happening to a tree and, and uh, you, you can't stand next to a tree and, and shout now grow for Christ's sake uh, and give me some leaves, give me some leaves, tomorrow I give you 24 hours and then you have to make some flowers. And this is not the way it is. So uh, my ability to, to hit the right notes uh, is still not there because this is uh, apparently the last thing to appear. But what's happening now is that the sound is changing. So that my, con my, my connection in my mind from me to my physical uh, hands, expression, my expression is becoming tighter. And <coughs> today I will not try to play even more without uh, blemish, but I will try somehow to demonstrate the change in the sound and <coughs> the change in the sound changes also the expression completely so that you, the more sound the more ability I have to control the different sounds uh, in piano and forte and fortissimo the more I am able to express what I am really sensing feeling and hearing and it's growing and uh, the ability to hit the right notes at the right time will come uh, this time I will make uh, some brief um, recollections from the last uh, video, which was only four weeks ago. And um, the last time I played the first prelude in C major by Bach, and it sounded like this. example and now it's completely different because now I'm able to make a more ringing sound which is more precise uh, in the um, build-up of overtones which slightly alters the tempo and uh, slightly show the chords for uh, what they are worth to the value of um, musical unity than what I was able to play before. So now it sounds like this. again but never mind the <coughs> each time the sound is changing I have to learn what I play from the beginning because uh, I'm using different muscles and my automatic memory has to change completely I'll give a few other examples uh, the next one was I, I played um, a bit of the Scriabin etude 
uh, opus 8 number 5, sounded like this. <laughs> But uh, because of the increased sound, the uh, interpretation is, is broader and um, I can put more emotion into it or hear more emotions uh, in, in this music. So let me try. I will probably hit more wrong notes than the last time because there's something changing with the sound. I'll give you an example where uh, something that I've just begun playing where just uh, listening to the, the sound uh, creates the almost the entire interpretation. Uh, it's a piece I haven't played before, the, the second legend by Franz Liszt. And um, this is about the uh, holy St. Francis walking on the waves. And this is uh, a miracle. We are going to, <coughs> to listen to a miracle. And um, I've listened to a lot of recordings on this uh, on YouTube, and I have uh, quite a few on the disc as well. And um, in the beginning, it says mezzo forte. And um, almost everyone, apart from having near Jassi plays it almost like this. Well, this might be a mezzo forte, but it's uh, not andante maestoso. If you play mezzo forte with sound, this that sounds like this. also has an influence on the tempo and uh, if you then dare to add uh, the astonishment of being witness to a miracle to come uh, the sound is still a little bit different not forte but mezzo forte with sound <laughs> say this all the time, never mind the wrong notes, but um, this sound is uh, necessary in order 
to find out what's actually happen happening in this piece of music. And um, I love making these sounds. And uh, last time I played the beginning of the Greek piano concerto, um, and it sounded like this. coming back. It's not something that, I, that I'm training or doing, it's simply growing within me. This also has an influence on the, on the tempo and uh, uh, in everything that this uh, concert is all about. which I uh, used to be able to play, actually. And um, I, uh, what, how shall I express this? I, I don't want to play this until I can play. This sounds as if uh, don't uh, take a swim until you are able to swim. But um, I really mean that the, the arpeggios in the left hand have to be, uh, in, in my view, completely under control with enormous power. I heard so many uh, pianists playing this uh, cadenza, and they can play it, and but the power is not there. Well, I have glimpses of the power which is coming, but I can't play the notes. I just try to give an example. <laughs> interpretation. Uh, last time I played uh, that scene by Schumann and um, I think I'll just give you the beginning of this al also to, to show the change in uh, interpretation. changes as I said the tempo and now I can s I can smell the forest I can uh, see the green foliage in the with uh, life uh, light be uh, behind it and um, this is incredible and it's a completely new way of approaching music 
uh, which is not something I have invented, but it's coming to me as my consciousness is healing my ability to play. I played the Schubert A major sonata uh, and uh, it sounded like this. <laughs> time I've discussed with myself uh, how to play the, the first uh, chord. Should it be in one or broken? I, I can play it like this. Richter plays it like this. Uh, the question is, did Schubert have small or large hands? Or is there a tradition in the, the romantic area where you break it? And I decided that uh, I would break it in order to show uh, that this sonata contains some kind of invitation to life. It's not just beautiful music. And again, it's the sound. Don't mind the wrong notes, but listen to what the sound does with the interpretation. <laughs> sound and I know that I will be more and more uh, secure so I can also play the right notes. 
But uh, I, it's strange to say, I, I don't want to play the right notes until I can do it right. And um, maybe you can hear that uh, despite all these friends here, I'm a little bit nervous today because I can, all the time, I can hear what I've been, um, what is it called, uh, in doctrine, indoctrinated, indoctrinated uh, to think and believe that now, Peter, play something right. And if you can't play it right, then practice, practice, practice. Uh, I can't practice. Um, because I'm handicapped, I can wait for my ability to return. I, I've been uh, discussed this with uh, a few friends, uh, and some uh, say with uh, probably a good reason. Well, you have to practice. Everybody practiced. Uh, Richard practices. Horvitz practiced. Even Liszt practiced. Well, I don't think so. It uh, demands of what you what you think practice is if to practice is to play this until you can do it this is not what Liszt did uh, he was able to play it from sight almost from child so uh, when he practiced uh, in quotation mark he, he was uh, enthusiastic he was happy he was uh, trying all kinds of ways and interpretations and uh, he didn't practice in order to make his fingers move in the right way he practiced in order to try out all kinds of things and to uh, memorize what he was actually doing so i'm not able to practice scales or a course because uh, i'm on my way to being able to play it almost prima vista uh, but on the way um, I can cling to what's coming forward and this is actually as I have said a couple of times something which is as close to science as it can come I'm not an educated um, consciousness self healing process professor at some university this is something I have been able to study uh, myself I've uh, been necessary for me to study it by myself but I can show it so as I said before this is not how to play the piano this is about the human consciousness um, one more thing from the last time um, the Chopin scherzo number three in, in uh, C-sharp minor um, I played this <laughs> sounds are a, a bit more precise. They're still not there, but something has happened. Listen. Um, now I'm going to play a few things that I have played a couple of times. Uh, I play this uh, almost every time. And um, what I want you to hear or to listen to is the change in sound and the change in the interpretation because of the change in sound. And uh, here comes this uh, middle piece, center, center piece of the Liszt uh, Sonata in the B minor. And uh, the octaves are still getting better and better.
chains. And um, I'm really in, in awe that I am allowed slowly to be able to play these incredibly wonderful works. There's something I would like to try once more, and this is the beginner of the Liszt second legend. And uh, the reason why I want to try is that I, I want to um, fight this uh, slight uh, nervousness. And um, something like that often comes because um, you're unsure what people want, uh, will mean or think of, of what you're doing. And um, I remember from uh, my time at the conservatory that uh, if you're nervous, uh, you can have a tendency to play a little too fast. And if you get agitated, you also play a little too fast in instead of playing in an agitated way. And um, <coughs> I would like to uh, illustrate something here. What's happening uh, for me is um, when this sound comes back, it's uh, very much in the left hand. Um, traditional for many pianists, the right hand is maybe stronger than the left one. And uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and now uh, the the sound is coming back for me, and the agility also in the left hand, which means that um, there's a much broader sound spectrum. Uh, there can be a tradition to make the right hand sounds. Uh, the predominant um, to, to um, overwhelm the left hand sound so that you play it for instance uh, like this uh, and, and then very carefully um, but as I hear it if you really make the sound that uh, is written, that's uh, deep, deep octaves, then it's a saint that's meeting a river. So the saint is in the right hand and the river is in the left hand. And so this is a competition. And um, I'm now playing it as uh, slowly as I dare play, um, because you fight the idea that it's boring to play slowly, but I don't think so. And um, also notice these uh, beginning, there's uh, these very deep octaves here. It, it's not, but there's this one also. Session here, I would play just a few things more as, as uh, much as, it, as I can, and that's the two Chopin ballads, uh, F major and A flat, and then the wedding of on the Trollhagen. And also, here uh, it's completely new for me, so I'm surprised all the time what, what uh, sound I'm able to make. 
With this new sound, I'm able to tell a completely different story. This means that uh, it's a stranger to me what I'm playing now. So uh, if I make mistakes, this is why. something is changing now. And the same is uh, the case with the A flat ballad.
and <coughs> well, I can't um, resist just also sharing this uh, with the left hand in uh, just at the beginning of this uh, Rachmaninoff prelude, uh, uh, 23 number two, which I play all the time. And uh, <coughs> when I play this, um, I become so absorbed I is in the sound that I can't play it. But uh, you can hear that something is happening to my left hand. <laughs> It's new.
Det var så. Ups.